today's factual fiction is the story of a vampire countess with links to Transylvania. Yes, this is the factual fiction of Elizabeth Bathory. So one of the most, she's one of the most famous female serial killers and she's also kind of quite a lot like fictionalised as the female counterpart to Vlad the Impaler. Um, because her family had links to Transylvania um, and she was related to the Polish monarchy um, and yeah, where's well, the Countess? She was born in 1560. Nurbadol, um in Turkey, in Habsburg monarchy. Habsburgs were like the like most dynastic family ever like they have links to everywhere during the kind of 16th century which is when this takes place. Oh, is that so Bathory's case involves the murder of young women mostly who were in her employ so young poor women who she employed as servants and she brutally tortured them, subject them to all kinds of things. She'd make them sing on, sit on stinging nettles, bathe in sitting nettles. She'd stick hot rods, God knows where. Um, she'd sew their mouths shut. Um, all kinds of horrific stuff. She baked magical boys and cakes for people. It was just all this crazy stuff. And when she was arrested, over 300 people were interviewed for the prosecution. That's crazy. But she was never put to death or anything, she was just kept in the solitary confinement until she died. So let's get into the nitty gritty of, um, you know, where the vampire stuff comes in and if she actually did what they said she did. So it's actually referenced that the actual number of people she killed was probably in the 30s and not the ballpark figure of 650 that some people give. Which is crazy, like, she wouldn't have time to get anything else done if she was killing 600 people. Like, damn. I don't have a social life and I do nothing. <laughs> Maybe that was a social life though. Mm, probably. Um, and yes, as I said, they were all young servants. And so it's believed that because she was jealous or envious of these young, beautiful women, she was slowly getting older at this point. Um, and that's the reason that she thought she could like take their youth. Um, and there's even one claim that once she was torturing a servant so loudly that um, priests or monks that live nearby were throwing things at the wall to try and get her to shut down, like shut up and stop torturing um, <laughs> the servants, which is crazy. Um, but quite a lot of it stems from the fact that she was probably just maybe not torturing them, but she was just trying to assert authority. And women who assert authority are always villainised. I mean, who are who of any kind of power. I mean, how Anne Boleyn was villainised. Even Elizabeth I got some kind of villainy when everyone turned, to, turned on Mary Queen of Scots' side. And then, you know, there were other times in the 16th century where everyone hated Mary Queen of Scots. Just powerful women have always been villainised. And her husband was away at war, so she was trying to run the estate, run the household. And, yeah. People just didn't like it and they blew things <clears throat> and they blew things out of proportion. I mean other female members of her family were also villainized, like there are rumours of um like her cousin or something being a witch and all these weird bisexual lesbian affairs it was slandered her name. It was like the earliest um kind of version of a political smear campaign against the women of this family and I don't really know why but um you know they were a powerful family they had lots of links and connections and uh I guess why. So one of the most infamous uh legends about Elizabeth is that she bathed in the blood of her female victims and maybe even drank it bottoms up. <laughs> Um, though this legend kind of came into play later, so over a century um, and a half really after she died um, was when this started to appear. So it was in the Tragica um, History His. I've got it right now. I always check my books in these because I don't want to ever get something really badly wrong. Yes, 
also in the Tragica Historia in 1729, and it was written by a Jacobite. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that's when it first appeared, and also lots of this um, kind of rumour and legend of her vampiric ways and the bathing in the blood and whatnot um, kind of definitely developed in the 17th, 18th century, maybe even into the 19th century. I mean, she's been fictionalised lots of films and books, and I first remember hearing about her on the back of a horrible history card um, that came with the magazines. I don't know if anyone used to get the magazines. Um, obviously, Terry Derry, who wrote the horrible history books, he's not a proper historian, so quite a lot of his history is based on like the kind of not so accurate <laughs> accusations of history, so I do remember it saying on the back of this card that she bathed in blood. Of course, the fact that some things were um, fictionalised does not mean at all that she was innocent. I mean, she could have been killing these people um, and they just made it seem more extravagant than it actually was. Um, I guess we'll never really know. This is a fact or fiction where I don't really know, like, you know, it is all that up in the air. Um, and you know, it's really sad that we'll, we'll never get to know these mysteries. <laughs> um, but she did die alone um, in her solitary confinement, and it's rumoured that she was buried there at that castle, or that she was sent back to home in a shed, a seed, um, in the family vault, but no one actually knows for sure where she's buried, or if her body's even anywhere. She's a vampire, right? Um, so. Yeah, no one knows where they originally thought she's buried. There isn't really any sign of there being a tomb, so it could just be she's in the back row of the vaults. <laughs> um, so this is my little quick fact or fiction with fake blood on my hands because, yeah. Um, I'm sorry Halloween's not happening this year. I'm working full time. Last year I can't even manage it working part time. <laughs> so yeah, go figure. Um, I'm gonna get a few more videos out um, before Tuesday and around Tuesday. And yeah, so today's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, so I'll do three videos. <laughs> and then the vlog will be up after this. Okay, bye. Oh, also, I'm going to try to keep scary, factual fiction kind of videos going um, for as much as possible because I want to kind of have a spooky vibe all year round. <laughs>